Hello guys, my name is Amit Sani and I welcome you in this uh, daily Hindu analysis video. In the morning these videos come, in the evening the MCQ videos come. So uh, give me your feedback on, on all these lessons and give me your feedback for the MCQ lessons also. Whatever we are leaving in these lessons, we are covering in the questions and uh, whatever important is there to explain. If I leave that uh, any day, then I take it uh, uh, the next day or the next to next day. So uh, this is all covered on 8th of July. It is. We will start the lesson here. Important is that it's a daily addition in your opinion making, in your uh, understanding the issue. The main issue is that final uh, argument would be yours. My way is to give you all the uh, uh, reg uh, clarity regarding all the directions and uh, you have to decide about your thoughts because explanations are of various types and uh, there can be uh, different versions of explanations these days because the information is very much secretive and information is not totally clear and there are opinions there are differences in the newspapers also and uh, you have to decide about uh, decide about your opinion after uh, understanding the logic there so that's the case pocket news app trending on number one if you have not downloaded it yet then uh, go and download it soon these are the important affordable courses by top faculties of study iq and a very affordable one below the video all the des description is given numbers are given here you can call and you can visit the website also pdf you will get here on this uh, uh, group and uh, you can follow me on instagram also telegram's link is also given and uh, study iq telegram link we all know about that these are two important idioms and uh, next reclaiming reclaiming the indo-pacific narrative this is a specific uh, article targeting uh, asean there 34th summit of asean that happened recently in bangkok and what they told about uh, indo-pacific region you see pacific region and indian ocean region and these countries uh, these 10 countries of asean they are there located in the middle of that so till now they were not very much active they were not uh, taking any side here but now they are on a driving seat they say that uh, we will have our own non-binding document here and we must be active here because china is uh, uh, towards aggression here and from west america wants its presence there japan has released its uh, uh, white paper here for this region australia has also given its uh, opinion about that india is also giving its uh, vision in shangri la dialogue in 2018 modi ji told about that so uh, we will be crucial here and regarding that this article talks about important for gs paper too mainly and it's a very excellent article if you want to write about the indian ocean region and what are the challenges and what are the important uh, stakes that all these stakeholders are putting here what is the stand of asean what is the stand of india what is the stand of america and japan australia and china specifically so regarding all of them you can write here so it's a means question for you and the answer is here in this article asean outlook on the indo-pacific that they are releasing here they are saying that a strategic narrative must be here and we are bringing a non-binding document here and they say that all other regional players, all other important stakeholders in this, in this world, they are uh, uh, telling about their uh, goals here and they all want their activeness here. Through this ARIA Act, America has given a name that it would be Indo-Pacific. India said that uh, uh, we have opened an Indo-Pacific wing in our External Affairs Ministry. So ASEAN is crucial here. Indian Ocean Dream Association is crucial for India and uh, quad group uh, would be important uh, in this uh, indo-pacific wing here so asean regarding asean india is also very much hopeful we have uh, uh, act east policy now we had look east policy then uh, a working active act east policy is going on rcp is being discussed here and many many issues so despite individual differences between these asean 10 countries they are coming together for a common approach regarding this area they say that uh, it's high time now and we have been very much inactive in this region and we will be active here and uh, there must be a code of conduct in the south china sea also and in the indo-pacific region because china's aggression is not acceptable we will counter that next we will not go with us also so this way we will balance this thing here because us launched its uh, foip strategy free and open indo-pacific but the intention is clear that it wants to counter china there and it wants to uh, keep its uh, dominance in all the regions of this world so ASEAN says that we will balance it out and uh, whatever all these countries are saying we want a cooperation there and India is welcoming ASEAN's move it says that uh, uh, we do not want to take sides we do not want to 
counter any specific country there is aggression from china there is a uh, uh, dominance from america in this region but we will counter both but we will go uh, with both the countries we want cooperation here okay so it's a frontal engagement by asean now and asean says that uh, we would not allow this region to become a major power competition area and uh, we will align with all but uh, it it would be a cooperation not taking any side so india is welcoming this move and india says that uh, uh, ball is now in the court of other regional stakeholders asean's stand is clear and it's good and you see regarding rcp also as i told you that rcp is being pushed by these asean countries they say that this free trade agreement the biggest fta is uh, uh, stuck and it's in cold bags now and it should move maybe countries like india australia they can join later although they are uh, they are in the group of asean plus 6 but they are not very much active and they are not pushing for this asean uh, this rcep agreement there but the prime minister of uh, uh, thailand also he has said about that and he says that uh, it should move on and keeping this activeness they say that indo indo pacific region is very much important trade is moving through this region and we have been inactive and it's not good because we are the central countries we want the center position there and we want our say here so that is the case it is not a area where only big players will play we have our also central uh, our, our central role here also so that's how it's a uh, active stand of asean in the indo pacific re pacific region and telling about all other uh, visions here from the stakeholders so that's a important article and uh, next is regarding india's stand regarding rome statute rome statute was established in 2002 in the yellow page i am giving this uh, and for additional information rome statute signed in 1998 and uh, operational since 2002 it is established four core international crimes established four genocide crime against humanity cah war crimes and crime of aggression so four important core crimes it is dealing with and it is in addition to all of the countries jurisdictions and uh, regarding those issues things are reaching up to international criminal court this icc was uh, is working on the rome statute concept and uh, important thing is that we are not the signatory here that's the problematic thing because many issues are going on in the case of sajan kumar delhi high court said in 2018 it said that uh, many issues of crime against humanities are taking place we we are not a signatory 122 countries are the signatory of rome statute we are not the signatory that's a problematic thing and it's a blot on our international image there but some issues are here like uh, in the naxalite area and the kashmir issue and the afspa issue things are very much complex and we cannot be very much sure about uh, uh, any side that we would have to remain uh, a non signatory here or we would sign this rome statute things are so complex so first we need to get clarity on these in those objects but uh, issue is that that uh, consistently they are going towards more and more complexity afspa is uh, going on in kashmir the situation is very problematic although uh, pakistan and kashmir now wants to take this issue on a international platform but uh, we want to keep it bilateral and uh, that's a problematic thing and many times the issues are there in the naxalite area many ngo civil society groups they say that the official stand is not clear and uh, many troubles remain tribals are struggling here and they are pushed uh, for some uh, negative steps there so it's a unclear situation but we would have to accept what is the official stand there an official stand is that that indian state is consistently fighting with naxalism and uh, uh, the issue of uh, uh, insurgency in kashmir so that's the case but the reference of rome statute talks about the crime against humanity in all these cases innocent people have lost their lives so that was the main issue and that's why delhi high court was talking about that and it says that uh, we have signed genocide uh, convention of 1948 but still we have not brought up a domestic legislation regarding that and that's a shameful thing for us and uh, there are issues of systematic attack like uh, the state police and all these are used in some uh, uh in some uh, incidents like the anti sikh riots and uh, in the issues of uh, uh, muzaffar nagar uh, uh, 
riots and in Kandamal case of Odisha, Gujarat riots in 2002, Mumbai riots in 1993. So in all these issues, state machine was involved there, although according to, to the India's official stand, they were countering the, the anti-social elements and who are uh, uh, fueling these riots and all. So in some allegations, many innocent people, they have also lost their lives. So these are crime against humanity uh, according to some uh, parameters. So because they are controversial, we are not deciding about those things. But certainly, according to some international reports, things are in a domain of a crime against humanity. So Kashmir, next slide issue, AFSPA issue uh, in Northeast areas and all. So a difficult situation uh, really for the government, uh, for the civil society groups and all and uh, this uh, rome statute always been a problem here but how do we decide about that you see many uh, huge countries in many many conventions like america in most of the conventions it has not uh, uh, ratified these issues so that's why we also say that uh, why only us why not all of them and why major countries they have their own say we would also have our say so that's the case and uh, uh, we would have to write on both the sides there that's the case so it's an important article in GS paper uh, 2 and 3 also. Okay. Next article, a critical document on the uh, budget provisions and the issues there. T.A.T. Ram Mohan, he says that uh, ratio of fiscal deficit to GDP, that, that is much talked about. And this decline of 3.323 uh, uh, by 2021 is appreciated a lot by commentators and the markets and especially the media houses the specific media houses which always uh, are cheerful about the government moves and uh, the way they are presenting the budget the way they are uh, showing the uh, the the statue of uh, goddess Lakshmi and, and all and uh, very much uh, uh, delighted with this budget and they are asking uh, reaching up to these uh, uh, farmers and all uh, whatever they are saying whatever their true opinions are but they are sh say, showing that uh, it's all a accelerating budget situation but writer says here that many ambiguities are there and they are saying that private investment would be the key growth driver but how it is going to be possible this is to be questioned here that's the case writer says it is astonishing that Sitaraman's budget speech did not even mention the fiscal deficit figure and perhaps a first of sort means it has never happened and first time it has happened and first time again one thing happened that they never uh, told any detail about the schemes what are the allocations there so no reference to the path towards the fiscal deficit target of 3.3 percent means a lot of times uh, she hailed that uh, we are keeping it 3.3 it will reach up to 3 3 percent but how how you are going to do that because whatever you are uh, giving here what are the provisions what are the situations right now these things are countering your uh, claim there and expenditure is expected and in that time instead of taking a range you are fixing the number at three percent what is the need here and uh, what you are claiming here that's totally different and it says that first time it is happening that uh, you see the uh, one thing is happening consecutively that whatever they decide whatever they uh, estimate they are not being fulfilled but first time it is happening that even the revised targets too have been missed, missed thus far. So even those are not uh, getting completed. So uh, he or she would be a brave soul who believes that the 3% target will be met. How we can believe that? What are the grounds there? Although they have got success in reining in traditional items of revenue expenditure. You see, subsidies are the major burden on the economy. But it is not like that, that always they are... Uh, 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 always always uh, uh, they are uh, hailed negatively because subsidies are given to give some support to the poor people always so you cannot say that 100 percent they are a negative uh, standard and there must be no subsidies so it is not like that but claiming uh, and uh, and uh, uh, getting credit for uh, uh, removing some subsidies there and uh, keeping their numbers very low and not talking about the expenditure when it is needed then it's not always a good situation so that's the case major subsidies they have been uh, kept around 1.4 percent of the gdp so that's a good thing but 
where these prices are going to rise those are also going to be a problem and it is not like that that you have uh, cut these expenditures and the benefit will reach to all people it is not like that because additional items are there pm kisan scheme is there and uh, uh, it is also very much criticized that it is not going to be really great for the farmers area it is not going to cover any kind of agrarian crisis and it is not talking about any structural reforms there it is just an income support and huge burden on the economy there around uh, 87000 crore rupees uh, they would need here and they are consistently slashing the budget on major schemes like narega so what kind of management is that this is not expected but uh, it is being uh, claimed as a very really really great budget so that's the case but uh, the writer is not in the favor here he says that uh, they projected for 2018-19 that we would uh, reach up to these 12.1 uh, percent of the gdp for the tax gdp ratio means we will collect more and more taxes GST they had introduced and uh, many changes and e processes in the budget file in the tax filing there. So they said that they said that we would reach up to 12.1% in 1819. In 1920, we would reach up to 12.4%. But what is the reality? Where the reached? You see, the, these were much uh, acclaimed at that time and uh, too much advertisement uh, we saw on some uh, media houses. But what is the reality? Where the reached? There is just 11.9% 11, 11 in 1819 and 11.7% uh, in 1920 means it will actually got a decline. So how you are expecting 5 trillion dollar economy when conditions are such your revenues are not rising and you are not uh, trying to spend uh, and uh, private investment is stuck and public investment you are not supporting here. So that's the case and you are relying just uh, on the talks of uh, boost in a private investment but how how uh, from a situation where these are stuck how they are going to support the growth how magically this can happen tell tell us about that and uh, situation of disinvestment they are relying on disinvestment but it is not gonna fulfill the situation here it was a target of 90,000 crore rupees uh, last year and it is a target of 1 lakh 5,000 crore rupees uh, this year so relying totally on that and where a situation is that that many of these uh, uh, disinvestment of these PSUs, they will be bought by other PSUs and it's not a long term situation. It's a no long term solution there. So it's it merely defers the fiscal problem and it's not a fiscal sustainability long term solution. So it is also not supportive and uh, not uh, much we can expect here in this area. Next, only one thing that is left that is the RBI's uh, 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 share. And Bimal Dalan committee has submitted a report on that, but that, that is not available publicly. So we do not know what they have recommended. But the expectations are such that uh, one shot transfer from RBI is not possible. And government wants one shot transfer and a huge transfer by RBI reserves. But that is not going to be possible uh, soon. It is expected by the experts, but we do not know what happens. But this is the only way left. But that is also not a wise, wise decision that uh, getting this much share of RBI shares, uh, RBI reserves uh, and uh, relying on this issue and taking economy towards $5 trillion economy, just doubling the growth rates uh, within 2-3 years. It looks questionable. It looks impossible for now because situations are different. Automobile sales are all time low and uh, many sectors are struggling. They are saying that uh, more and more economic, uh, sorry, uh, electric vehicles uh, people should rely on, but there is no manufacturing. Not much manufacturing is there in the electric vehicle sector. But they are talking everything about that. They are saying that we are uh, uh, making uh, more and more uh, uh, increases in uh, cesses and excise duties in petrol and diesel because we want people to use public transport there. What kind of logic is there? Means you are raising the price is there and it is all going to be expensive for common people and you are giving an argument that we want to pe we want people to save more and we want people to use public transport there and that is the reason that we are making it expensive and what is going to happen with that what is the reality reality is that everything will become expensive so everything that common person uses that would become expensive more and more expensive so what kind of logic is that and how you were countering the previous governments there you were saying that uh, uh, there is uh, too much expensiveness and uh, uh, prices are uh, shorting up and it is all killing the poor there 
and now when this thing is happening by you intentionally then you are saying that uh, uh, this is uh, uh, our move to make a shift in people's behavioral approach that people will save more and people will use uh, uh, other uh, public transport issues and all so that is the questionable thing and writer says that uh, the direction of the macro policy has never been in doubt why writer says that because government says that uh, uh, twin balance sheet problem is there and that is the biggest obstacle in the private investment and they have used many many sources there they have used many many tools there but with very less success ibc is the most successful uh, 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 till now and that is also very slow so the issue of ibc in solving the twin balance sheet problem and the npa crisis uh, that is very much slow so that is the only working idea and here right what the government says government says that uh, because of policy uncertainty a lot of problem is there and we would uh, uh, manage this uh, policy uncertainty and we will bring some clarity there and this problem will be solved to a greater extent so this is questionable and this is very very bizarre here writer says that uh, all the problem of npa crisis and the losses on the accounts of companies this twin balance sheet problem which has been there for four five years you will solve all these issues just with some policy certainty what kind of logic is that and uh, on the basis of this particular argument you are saying that uh, private investment will boost up and economy will uh, grow with the double numbers and we will reach up to five trillion dollar economy this is totally bizarre there one thing that is uh, a big positive that is 70,000 crore rupees uh, allocation to the to the uh, banking sector but it is only going to be useful when this all will be used in this uh, fiscal year that will not be uh, procrastinated and that will reach up to companies and these companies will do good businesses and they will solve their uh, twin balance sheet problem and NPA crisis will be tackled and then the economy will grow. So based on just hopes you are claiming to reach up to 5 trillion dollar economy that is the case although some steps are good but where is the guarantee what if it does not it is just a plan and uh, they are allocating money it will reach up to companies uh, that is also a major challenge then they will grow fast and they will bring those investments and they will bring uh, great growth in the economy these all are expected things so on these expected things you are claiming of five trillion dollar economy and you are advertising it so uh, passionately that people are just talking about five trillion dollar economy as it is achieved already the kind of campaigning on social media you are uh, observing it looks like we have achieved five trillion dollar economy already but these are the major challenges and the issue of nbfc's you see they, they are saying that we are we are supporting nbfc's but if we go into detail what is the reality reality is that the cover of 10 percent uh, uh, credit loss when banks will buy the pools of nbfc's uh, up to one lakh crore rupees then that 10 percent uh, credit cover is there loss cover is there by the government government but it has a time it will only be a cover for six months only six months and next only for the well rated nbfc's it is not for all the nbfc's and that's the trouble means which are not well rated they are going towards loss and banks will not be able to bail them out and they will not buy their funds so no cover is there for uh, these uh, uh, troubled nbfc's only for the well rated economy well rated nbfc's which are doing good so what kind of bailout is that bailout is there for the stressed ones and you are seeing that it is going to be for the well rated nbfc's and uh, uh, whose uh, portfolios are good so things are not so simple and claims are tall but realities are different so that's why the writer says the answer to the economic slowdown may not be as simple as survey makes it out so huge gap between claims and the realities so, th so that's the case next if we come to the defense allocation here is a huge disappointment you see they have uh, many committed liabilities and because they will uh, all go for some uh, uh, huge deals like IAF go for these uh, Rafael issue uh, they will go for S400 deals and uh, CS47F Chinook heavy lift helicopters and AS64 Apache copters so they all will, will need money and here according to the allocation they all will run out, run out of their monies because they have their expenses there and no money left for the new deals there 
same case is there for the navy also they will go for these mh60r and uh, uh, this that is also a 2.6 billion dollar deal and uh, 10 more p81 as a long range maritime patrol aircraft so that is also three dollar uh, billion dollar uh, deal so how these things will be possible they are short of thousands of crores you see projected means that must have been given for the army it is 36,000 what they are getting 29,400 and for navy projected was 35,700 and what they are getting 23,100 for air force they de they were demanding around 75,000 crore rupees and what is allocated just 39,302 so how these things will be possible this will become a hollow claim means they will go uh, uh, for a long period of time now and the same case is going on again means claims are so high and demands are so high but allocation is so less real allocation is this much and committed liabilities are this much so these deals will not be possible with this kind of allocation that's the case so it's a major disappointment with the forces next if you talk about naregas they are claiming uh, uh, so high about the Aadhaar linked payments they are saying that technology is a big boost factor here but the uh, particular uh, body which is uh, called uh, uh, what what is the name here the people's action for employment guarantee a network advocating for the better implementation and the accountability for this uh, narega scheme they say that government says that Aadhaar has uh, given huge proof that Aadhaar technology is very much a boost factor and it has uh, uh, increased the efficiency there and they are talking about the payment system. They said that within 15 days only 25% payments were happening. Now 90% payments are happening within 15 days. First of all, this is a fast data. A lot of bodies has given this proof that 90% uh, is not uh, uh, happening right now but they say that 90 percent and they are talking about the efficiency factor this report by this group said that uh, first state verified the work done and then they give this uh, uh, role of these uh, uh, officials and all these uh, uh, numbering of the, uh, the of these registered uh, beneficiaries and, and there and then they transfer the fund there so Aadhaar is linked only in the next stage of fund transfer so how can you be certain about the uh, these uh, particular uh, argument that is that has been made that there is a huge impact of other link payment system on the scheme and uh, we should regularize it and we should make it very much a robust step of other link payments how you can say that when it is just used for the fund transfers so uh, this data is faulty and as it's a, it's a questionable data when it is only used for the payment system so how you can say that uh, uh, in a supply and demand of workers as well as as well as in worker attendance and schemes performance in drought hit areas they that have improved because it is not linked to that so how you can uh, claim about uh, these things and uh, uh, these uh, important uh, writers here who are professors in some universities and they say that this implementation factor and this payment issue is not giving this proof that that it's a major uh, a major uh, impact there of this Aadhaar link payment system it is not like that so all these data are questionable and uh, uh, claiming that uh, in the budget and so openly it is not right and it is going going, going uh, uh, up to many many scrutinies there so major articles will come on this issue also because in much detail we need to see and whenever we are going into detail many problem problems we are finding and uh, then we know that uh, there is a huge gap between the claims and the realities next in uh, in the issue of a child welfare they say that uh, if we compare this data with 15 16 budgetary estimates then in these estimates of this budget some declines are there in major areas and uh, whatever these expectations were and whatever their claims were and whatever they are they were saying that we will uh, do these kind of uh, uh, improvements here and we will uh, take care of all these things draft national education policy is being discussed there a lot of issues there are taking place and uh, in the health sector also in the Anganwadi sector also much more needs to be done and a lot of uh, allocation was expected there but not much growth we have seen here 
health allocation shows a decline of 0.39 percentage although these data are an improvement from the last year's data but the last year data was uh, already controversial and there was a decline in those allocations so how you can say that there would be an improvement there when these allocations are not that much high although in the areas of anganwadi services and the poshan abhiyan some improvements are there of 19% and the 14% from the last years but these things are inadequate that is the issue and a 16% cut in national child labor policy uh, sorry in national child labor project scheme so uh, that will be a major hindrance in the implementation of this project and that is for a very sensitive area of child labor so all these things uh, tell us that it's not up to the mark and things are inadequate there in the budget so all kinds of arguments uh, we have seen here so uh, these issues are talking about the major problems there next a red signal for train 18 production the vande bharat uh, express from delhi to varanasi that was running and it was one of the uh, biggest example of the efficiency there and the objective was to roll out a world class train at lowest possible cost with highest output and operational efficiency and with much safety and comfort there so this was hailed a lot in the media and as it was the biggest example in the make in india project and we have achieved a lot but this was the case of train 18 coaches okay and uh, uh, this was made in integrated coach factory of chennai and uh, a lot of supplies around chennai those were possible because it was hailed a lot by the government and they gave it, gave it a big big boost and uh, uh, it was within time they completed this and they delivered there and all the goals were achieved but now in this budget they are giving a red signal for these train 18 production they are saying that uh, this is not complying to the uh, uh, some design issues according to the rdso body the research designs and standard organization they are saying that there are some problems there and uh, allegations are that some major players there some uh, major uh, uh, industry houses and all they are behind this blockage although this was completed within time but uh, uh, due to uh, their concerns this thing is halted right now and it was completed within time and there were no major issues because they took care about all these things and they knew about these provisions but now uh, rdso is raising concern and uh, because of that reason government is saying that uh, uh, although it's a success story but right now we are giving a red signal now so that's the case and many would be disheart- disheartened with this move and uh, the stoppage of the work that would gloom among the suppliers in and around chennai because they worked very hard to make it possible within time so that's a huge issue so they may ask you about this icf coach factory and this uh, train 18 uh, issue and this vande bharat vande bharat express issue so uh, uh, go for the details for all these things these things certainly would be asked in the prelims stage next regarding indo afghan trade you see chabhar port was crucial and that was exempted in the us sanctions issue but as i told you although it was exempted chabhar port was ex- exempted but many stakeholders they stepped back why because of the us pressure and uh, the india's stand is also getting cleared here they said that uh, we are not under pressure of us anywhere but you see the reality is that they were allocating 150 crore rupees every year but now this year in this budget they have allocated just 45 crore rupees in this uh, project there so that is showing our less interest in this region and uh, in the air transport and station issues uh, there are also problems like afghan fruits and agricultural culture products are not reaching up to india why blockage of uh, pakistan's air space and uh, pakistan has extended it up to 12th of july so it was also additional problem there so indo afghan trade that is going through a lot of stress there and chabhar funding is a major cause here because it was the only gateway where we could access afghanistan and uh, we all know that uh, uh, if we talk about uh, the situation there gujarat then pakistan and this uh, and this particular gwadar port and then this chabhar port and uh, here it is afghanistan so we were accessing afghanistan through this route but now when chabhar is under trouble and we are not uh, uh, showing great interest here and somehow the us pressure is visible there 
so that that's why this access would be difficult here okay so that's the case next iran to breach uranium enrichment cap officially they are announcing and they are saying that we will go beyond this 3.67 percent limit that was set in the nuclear deal so that can be a problem and they say that uh, diplomacy is open we are open to new ideas but if there would not be any major support by other countries and no great solution we will we will see then after every 60 days we will enhance our facilities and we will breach these limits and we will try to develop our nuclear weapons there because it is our safety issue so that's the case and uh, many articles will follow here and what america says on that we will have to see so thanks a lot keep watching this was all for today we will meet again tomorrow thanks a lot